every dictatorial regime in the world that starts off, whether it's communism, fascism, or any other ism, okay, it all they always seem to start out with the principle that everybody's an idiot and I know better. Yeah. Right? It's always yeah. that. It's arrogance, pure, yeah. unmitigated arrogance. And we don't want to talk about it because we're right. You know, and, and that's that's the danger zone. When you start walking into that zone anywhere in the world with any ideology, and many ideologies, even Islam has that. Islam has that. Communism has that. Fascism has that. I mean, you know, the, the, the Nazis had as many political prisoners as, as, as Jewish people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they emptied out the mental institutions. I mean, yeah. I was recently reading a book on autism that basically, I mean, they, they took the... Um, they took the autistic children and they basically exterminated them as well, you know, on and on it goes. Um, and, the, and, you know, Hans Asperger, who uh, the, the term Asperger syndrome comes from, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he was, he was pretty advanced in this and he had his school and it was rather unstructured. Mm -hmm. and, um, there's a book out, uh, Steve Silverman, uh, The History of Autism that I was recently reading. And I mean, Silverman basically talks about Hans Asperger and what he was talking about, but because he was German, a lot of his, his, his research was neglected. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it got translated by a British woman. And then it, 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 it you know, it started to open people up. And you know, there's a the thing that the Enigma machine, there's a guy there who developed the Enigma, which was a code breaking machine. And in Great Britain during the Second World War, they had all these mathematicians, the, the, the best mathematicians that they could find, and they wanted to break the German code. Yeah. It was on this Enigma machine, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so they, they had all these mathematicians, and they couldn't figure hide nor hair out of anything. They, they, they basically were failing again and again. So they found this guy. There's a movie out about him, and I, I'm, yeah. I, I found this. I can't yeah. remember it. But <laughs> apparently this guy was autistic. Yeah. And people, the, his, his co-workers hated him because he had no social skills. Okay? He had poor, very poor social skills. But he figured out how to break the code. And you know what he looked for? He just looked for a simple pattern, which, which autistics are great at. And what was the pattern? Many of them ended their message with Heil Hitler. Uh... <laughs> right? So that when he found the Heil Hitler, he could figure out because the way the thing worked, the machine, once you figured out a few words, you put the right dies in the machine and it would tumble. The tumblers would come into the right place. And now you'd have the whole alphabetic code uh, deciphered. Yeah. <laughs> so, and some of it, I think they, they might've figured out. I mean, it, it, they didn't get into too much detail, but I mean that, that, so that kind of tells you. So then what's interesting is that Hans Asperger made a presentation to a bunch of Nazis prior to the, you know, the murder of all of his, all of his patients. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, these kids would be great code breakers. Oh, isn't that ironic? That dude, that's and the British didn't take him up on it, dude. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. the, well, the British did. The British did. The, you know? the British did. You know, to their credit. Wow, that's. I mean, it it makes sense. The people I know with Aspergers, right? They're really good at gambling. They're really good at playing slots or you know doing going to Vegas because they naturally see patterns that you and I don't see. Yeah, and. One guy I know who has Asperger's, he never loses. Whether he's at a on a cruise at a casino or he's in Vegas, he never loses. He always comes off making a little bit of money at the end. Like you and I, you know, yeah. let's say we start losing money, we're just like, fuck it, it's not worth it. But he loses money, he doesn't care. It's not like he's emotional, right? He just doesn't care because he's he knows where the pattern's going, and then he'll make it back. And yeah. I admire that about them. It's like, I mean, it's just how they're born. They just, their brain's different. It's, it's really interesting. Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the, like, like, you know, the wire that should go to the, that should go to the kitchen switch is actually upstairs in the upstairs bedroom, but yeah. all the wires are there. They're just yeah. different. Right. And yeah. they see, they see things sometimes like they report things like we, we can't see into the brain, but they report things like they can see numbers and they can see like uh, colors for numbers or music for, I mean, things are kind of mixed, right? So yeah. it gives you a different, I mean, and if, and if it's not that, it's, it's just a totally different perspective. And it's, it's part of the thing that you would expect under Darwinian evolutionary theory, Yeah. which is, I mean, you, you can believe in creationism if, 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 if you want, like some people, but um, at the end of the day, there is also um, 
you know, evolution that's going on and nobody can deny that. I mean, yeah. I can, I can breed different dogs, right? Yeah. <laughs> And you can take antibiotics and then see what happens in your gut. That's evolution going on. Yeah. Well, the other thing is you could take antibiotics and come down with some serious infections because all of your good. <laughs> yeah. And then the bad bacteria that didn't get killed, you know, they pass on more descendants. And then suddenly you have all the bad bacteria that don't get killed anymore by antibiotics. You know, a lot of, a lot of women go on to antibiotics, for example. And then they wonder why they have all these yeast infections and oh, things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times it's the antibiotics have killed off all of their good, yeah, <laughs> good uh, bacteria that would have prevented these things. Yep. So, I mean, antibiotics have a side effect and, you know, they're trying to minimize it because actually, you know, the, 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 the body is, we're using too much antibiotics and people are losing their immunities. And there's all these different diseases that now that come out and, and pop up in the hospitals that they don't know how to treat. Yeah. Flesh eating disease and, and different things. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, what were you saying before? Uh, with regards to libertarianism? Oh, no, um, because banking? something about evolution. Oh, oh, brain. Asperger's yeah. brain evolution. It's an evolutionary change. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it is. It's mm -hmm. been around for a lot longer than, 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 than they say. I mean, they used to call it uh, schizophrenia. Um, if you want to know more about it, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed uh, Silverman's book, uh, Steve Silverman. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called The History of Autism. It's a big book. I have it around here somewhere. But anyways, oh, Neurodiversity, it's called. And he's, he's from Seattle, Washington. And uh, I reached out to him one time and just, I, I read his book and I just, I just sent him a quick message and said, you know, I really enjoyed your book. Thanks for writing it. You know, it was really an eye opener. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's an eye opener also on the mental health situation and the mental hospitals and what they've done. I mean, some of the horrible stuff, like, I mean, you know, I I found I knew I always knew about MK Ultra. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. MK Ultra. Testing yeah, testing that kind of stuff on hippies. Yeah, uh, well, it's not. It's more than that. I mean, they actually went into the mental hospitals and they they uh, you know electroshocked people for weeks on end. Uh, gave them all kinds of uh, serious drugs and drug therapies. Mm -hmm. I've got some of the, I've got all this stuff in my book as well. I mean, the book goes quite over a lot of stuff. It's a very intense book to read. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's going to give you a lot of information in a short period of time. And it's kind of like, I, I'm, I'm not one, you know, you ever read, I, I've read a lot in my life and you ever read some people's books and you kind of like get, feel like saying to the guy, the author, get to the point. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the guy goes on and on and rambles about everything. Well, my, the way I write is like, I get right to the point, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to patronize my, my, uh, readers and, and, assume that they're dumb. I'm going to assume that you're smart. And I'm going to assume that if you see something you don't know, like MK Ultra, for example, you're going to, you're going to Google it, Wikipedia it or whatever, and you're going to see what it was. Yeah. But, um, so the, this whole MK, MK Ultra thing, um, was of course, a, a you know, a CIA program. It was also done in Canada, in Montreal, in the psychiatric hospital of Montreal and many in the U S as well. They, they were doing these like things too. Like people are in there for, for, you know, depression or different issues. And all of a sudden, they don't realize that they're being, you know, covertly put into a government brainwashing experimental program. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's your worst friggin' horror, right? Exactly. It's your worst nightmare. We have a lady here. I was reading a thing in the paper, uh, well, on online uh, from Mon where is it? Montreal. And she said that her mother, her mother had gone through this MK Ultra and was never the same. Like she was just basically, basically brain dead. Like she didn't remember anything anymore because they used to put her on electroshock treatments like for two weeks on end. And every time like she'd recover, they'd put her back in electroshock, keep electroshocking her, like just frying her freaking brain. And then they, some of them, some of them, I mean, there's even stuff like um, Silverman reports in his book about uh, some of the stuff they used to do with children. I mean, they, they put the kids on LSD in the 1970s, like little kids. Put yeah. them on LSD for weeks on end. Like what? You got this kid on a psychedelic drug. I mean, what kind of monsters are you? But you know what, Jerry? None of these guys have ever been convicted, and they never do. Yeah. <clears throat> we had we had a situation here in Canada with what we call residential schools. All the native kids, hundreds of thousands of native kids over the years, were, 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 were taken from their parents and like made white was the idea was to Europeanize them or whatever. Oh, yeah. They did that. Yeah. In America, they did that to the native Americans too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this is horrible, man. These, these kids, this is what I'm talking about. Like not taking care of your kids. 
like these kids were put into like a pedophile factory. I mean, they were basically molested on an ongoing basis. They had no protection. I mean, the only one who protects you as a kid is your mom and dad yes, your because parents, you're part yeah. of them. They love you. Yeah. You know, like you can't take kids away from their from their parents. I mean, you know, you, you know that. I mean, you, you expose your kid to all kinds of dangers. Yeah. Especially a little child, they can't talk or they can talk very limitedly. They don't know what's normal, what's right, and what's wrong. And then you put this vulnerable little innocent in in the hands of who knows what what I know about psychopaths. Who knows? You know, could yeah. be a bunch of psychopaths. Uh, certainly, a lot of pedophiles get involved in that kind of thing. I mean, but as, as a society, I mean, we've got to grow up and, and, and realize that there, there are dangerous people out there yeah. and we need to make sure that these people, but the thing is they don't get dealt with. They, these guys walk away. Yeah. They all walk away. They get a government pension for it. You know, <clears throat> you, you know, you remember the Unabomber? Yeah. I just watched a thing on Netflix about this guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called, I think it's called the Unabomber. Okay. This guy apparently. They tell this life story, but he was a genius. He was a mathematician, right? He was at, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Univ University of Southern California, Berkeley or something. I forget where it was. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, this guy was a professor. He had an IQ of 160. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's really smart. I mean, he, the, the, he, for, for, for decades, this guy was making bombs in, in, in a little shed. You know, he isolated himself. He's making little bombs like out of, and they call him, they used to, the FBI used to call him, I understand, the garbage, the garbage bomb maker because he'd make like integrated circuits out of trash and, you Damn. know, like he just, he was like so friggin' smart. He could make a bomb with like garbage, right? And that's why they could never track him because they couldn't find out where he's buying his components or whatever because yeah. he made them all from scratch. He just like put all this detail into it, right? Mm -hmm. And anyhow, I mean, I, I don't justify what the guy did because there was a, there was a lot of people he didn't like maybe from his university days it seems and yeah. he would like mail them bombs and shit but then the most shocking part about the whole thing and let's talk about this netflix special right the guy reports that he had when he was young and he went to university he he really loved this professor he like this one professor who was a professor of psychology so he started taking his courses because he wanted to understand certain things and so this professor puts him into a secret cia program for mk ultra what? where basically yeah he was he was friggin humiliated he was he was he was criticized for his ideas that he told the professor in confidence as a friend mm -hmm. and it was just basically like they tore his personality apart oh my god they, they tore his personality apart and now this guy's sitting in a jail somewhere and he's the criminal jeez okay like when i saw that i mean it's on, it's on netflix man you can watch it it's like when i saw that it's like Oh, it figures. Here we go again. Here we go again, right? It just can't be a criminal guy. No, it's got to be a, some government bullshit yeah. where they screw this guy over. And because government and legislature are combined together, nobody's going to prosecute these guys. They're all walking free on the streets with government pensions. And they can just remember and have a good old laugh about how they screwed all these people over and all the vicious things they did. You yeah. know? It, it just it just makes your stomach sick, but this is the way it is. This yep. is the way it is, man. I mean, yeah. I don't know. We have what we have to do is get fundamental government reform, and and I do believe that libertarianism works. I think a lot of the people that you talk to, like you know, uh, <laughs> our cold libertarians and this, that, and the other libertarian who want to put a label on it. I mean, basically, libertarianism comes under one thing. If you don't like my brand of libertarianism, then draft your own libertarian constitution, yeah, right? Yeah. Or, I, my, hope, my hope is that with this book that people will look at this book, and even if they don't take all of the ideas, they will look at a lot of the ideas and say, hey, you know what? This is what we got to do. Because what I see is going on. I do see that we're in, like, early 18th century France. And basically, we have an establishment that's like the court of Louis the court, Louis the Sixteenth, and they're basically sitting back and they're having a party and they're having a good time and um, they're screwing over the people and the working class, the ones who voted for Donald Trump, for example, are basically saying, you know what, we're getting tired of this and it's getting worse and worse. And yeah. one day this thing's gonna blow. And man. when Trump doesn't deliver and whoever else they vote for doesn't deliver, that's when they will really, really do something yeah. more. And what I don't understand is the left, okay? <clears throat> At one point, I was involved in a party here, a left-wing party here in Canada 
because I started out that way because I, mm. I was work I'm working class and I, and I and I like to see good things done for the working class. Yeah. Because I know how hard people's lives are. And I thought they were going to be like that and I got involved with them. And I started to see that this is not about working class people. This is about spite, it's about jealousy, it's about hating other people. It's there's a lot of hatred in the left. A lot of hatred. And 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 I understand the hatred, but they also have to realize that even people on the right are not necessarily their enemy. People on the right, a lot of people on the right just have a different point of view of approaching these problems, oh, yeah. how to deal with it. Oh, yeah. So, are, do, you, um, do you have a channel, a YouTube channel or something, or some way that people can contact you or talk to you more? Well, I have Harbinger View. I have a Harbinger at Harbinger View. At, uh, yeah, and I have a Twitter channel that's the same. Um, I've been using the name Harbinger. Okay, yeah. let me um, let me find all that. You should send that to me. Um, sure. you should send that to me also, and I can put it in the link to this to sure. to this talk when it's when it uploads. But I just sure. um, I'm getting I'm getting a little I'm getting a little hungry, so okay. I'm gonna, I think this is a good place to to end it. We've talked sure. about a lot of great issues, and we've um. Definitely explored a lot, man, and I, I like these conversations, and that's why people like watching the conversations I have with people because we just talk about a lot of things. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I, I think I think though we're what one of the things is that we're facing change in yeah. the next while, and I think everybody can feel it. Um, and uh, it's just like when I went to Asia. I mean, I, I'm from Canada, and we don't have a lot of, a lot of people here. When I went to Asia, I could feel the people around me. And I don't know. It's just like the feeling that you get that somebody's watching you from behind. Like you can feel these things. And one thing that I can feel, I can feel that there's a change coming. I can feel that people are getting angry. They're really getting angry at the establishment. The establishment is basically thumbing their noses at us, and it's not a good situation. And, I, I, and, and I, what I hope for, I don't want to have a situation like they had in Egypt where, you know, you throw out the dictators and then you bring in another pile of crap. Like, let's put some ideas out there for people. How yeah, to reform agreed. the system. Like, we got to have, we got we as a people, all peoples, we need to have a plan. If we fail to plan, we plan to fail. You know, yeah. we have to have a plan. Like, what we're going to do and alternative ideas and approaches. And I, I do think that political organization would be a good good way to go with this, like for political parties. And so I put my ideas out there. I'm not really an activist. I'm more of an idealist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be activist if, if some opportunity came up, but I'm really more of an idealist. So I put my ideas out there. And um, I'm, just, I'm just hoping that when the day does come, that we're going to look at some practical alternatives, that, that, that are, people are going to have to give this some thought beforehand. Because you don't want to have a situation where the whole system comes down and nobody knows what to do. Exactly. That's a mess. That's a, that's a, that's a catastrophe, man. Yeah. That's my, that, that, the devil you get in that case may be worse than the devil you have. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, time and time again, it shows up in even whether it's history or current events, you see it. Definitely yeah. have a plan. Yeah. Can you send me your email, Jerry? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have my email. Uh, well, if you could, I'm not sure. You, you got my email, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll Send give it to you again. Since I mean, you ha to log into the Hangout, you have to have my email. But here, okay, I'll, well, I may have it here. I'll have to I'll dig it up. I'll give it to you again. Okay. Um, and just you know, I'm putting. Oh, up, I got it here. I got yeah. it here. I'm just looking at it. I'm going to put up links in the future. I'm going to put up links to all the stuff we talked about, and if you want to send me any other links to include in this in this in the description of this talk i'll add it in too well if you could put up a little picture of my book in the corner somewhere i'd appreciate it um yeah in the, the thumbnail i can definitely do yeah. that um, yeah or even just on the screen while we're talking um let me see so people know like who is this guy right oh this is the guy who wrote this book they can see yeah, the book see cover there kind of like... really quickly by the way you see how you're sitting now yeah that should be how you sit in the future because before oh, okay. what was going on is, I don't know if you know about the rule of thirds, but the rule of thirds, yeah, do. you you don't want to you don't want to be only in the bottom third of the mm -hmm. screen because that's why people kept saying, "Oh no, oh he looks like he's disappearing." So, like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. You need to move your your camera a little downwards because you don't want 
okay. lot of negative space up there. How's that looking? No, the other way. The other way. Oh, the other way. It, like that? Yeah, that's much better. So in the future, when okay. you when you do podcasts, I recommend that because that way it, you you it just it's it's better for the human eye. The person looks like he's on screen. Okay. But yeah, let okay, me. I, um, I just got your email. Let me. Yeah, let me try. I mean, I will very quickly. What I can do I'll is I can share my screen real quickly so people mm -hmm. who are watching can see a cover of your book. Mm -hmm. But um, all right, let me let me do this real quick. Well, I hope this is a start for you. Maybe you'll be doing a new thing of interviewing authors. Yeah, I mean that would That's be that would popular. be cool. I'm I'm trying. Yeah. It's something I'm trying to do more. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Here's what I'll do. Let, let's see if this works. Uh, I'm gonna share my. Let's see if I if I share the application window. Let's see if that. So this this should work. So this there is. You go. Yeah. So everyone, this is the Libertarian Charter, and it's available um, on Amazon. Exactly, and I will put a direct link on the bottom of the description when this video goes live, or when this video gets uploaded, so people know that how to how to buy it directly and um if you have a kindle it's free if i'm correct yeah i have a kindle well, it's, it's available on kindle as well exactly so it's a, it's yeah. available on kindle so you could mm -hmm. buy the book or get it on amazon and um yeah um you have my email so just uh send me what website or twitter or whatever I, I will put all of that in the bottom of the description so everyone can contact you if they want to ask you more questions or they want to talk to you some more i'm sure I'm sure they sure. would love to talk to you. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what's the outcome of this in terms of your your viewers. And uh, I'm always open to an interview if there's anyone out there who's looking to also do an interview with me. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I you know I I deep down at heart I'm def I'm still a libertarian. You know I'm leaning more conservative. I'm still a libertarian, so <laughs> I welcome any libertarians. And I'm so glad you reached out to me. I'm really thankful. Like it's I'm thankful to you um, for giving me you know, a time. pragmatic libertarian. That's what we need. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what, Jerry? You're your own libertarian. It's terms, I mean, libertarian is, is about liberty. It's just about draft your own constitution, yeah. right? And that's I mean, essentially, if you're not advocating that the government control everything. If you're advocating that people have free choice in what they're doing, that's what libertarianism is. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, how you want to constitute that that freedom. And if you have some unique ideas tossed in, well, then you have my book. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And in a way, a lot of MGTOW are very naturally yeah. libertarian. They want to go their own way. They don't want to interfere with other people. They don't want other people interfering with them. Bam. Exactly. That's what yeah. it is. That's what it is. No, I didn't mean to be hard on MGTOW. I know where these guys are coming from. Been yeah. there, done that, you know, got the t-shirt as the expression goes. So you're on your second marriage, right? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, dude. Well, you know, um, I don't know if your wife's going to see this, but I'll tell, tell her I said hi. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll pass on the message. Definitely. And dude, yeah, send me anything. And um, I don't know when this is going to be done in coding, but once it's done in coding, it should have all the links and everything in there. Fantastic. I will, awesome. I will, you're going out to lunch, so mm -hmm. I'll go have my dinner because it's exactly. dinner time now. And uh, I, after dinner, I'll, I'll put all that in there and I'll email it out to you. Definitely, man. Mark, Thank thanks you. for tuning it's in. It's a pleasure. It's great to meet and you, Jerry. For those of you watching, this was Mark Bloom. Um, awesome guy. Um, you guys will see this very soon. If you didn't see it live, you guys will see this on my channel. So um, everyone watching, um, please leave a comment, etc. Press like and go follow Mark on Twitter.